This is not what I expected it to be. Welcome back to a beautiful, slightly breezy day here in Taiwan. We are coming to you from one of the cities that I was most excited to visit here in Taiwan. That's Kaohsiung. We are starting our day at Lotus Pond, which has the iconic dragon and tiger pagodas that you see all over the internet. We are also going to end our day at a night market. And today's a holiday, so we'll be there probably with a few thousand of our new closest friends. My new favorite street food. <laughs> and we are starting at one of the oldest walls in all of Taiwan. Are we? <laughs> Hold on. We'll be right back. This wall is almost 200 years old. I wonder if we can go up on top. Let's go find out. East Gate and the East Gate is a 500 meter section that is still preserved almost exactly the way it was nearly 200 years ago. So if you come here and you want to see the city wall this is the one to see. There are other gates. There's an East, North, South and West. All four of them still exist but this is the one that's the best preserved. So I would start here like we did. a water skier back home. I tried to convince him to give this a try, but the one time he did try this at home, it did not turn out well. Whoa. We don't film everything that we do. I know that might be hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> we maybe should have filmed a couple of things because we just had an incredible lunch and then we came across this. What is going on here? And then we saw <laughs> something else that was amazing. Hello. And that pretty much brings you up to speed with where we are now, which is... Spin, 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 spin. <sighs> we got our first view. Look at that. This is our first view of the Dragon and Tiger Pagoda. And it's much bigger than I expected somehow. And also there are tons of lotus flowers uh, floating in the bay here. It's really beautiful. And some of them are even blooming. It's beautiful. Yeah. We are so lucky that some of them are blooming. I didn't think they would be. Because of the pandemic, we can go around the pagodas, but we can't actually go up the stairs to the viewing platform, which is a bit of a bummer, but we always like to have reasons to go back to places that we like, and we like this place. There is so much to see on this lake. We're walking around it, or at least we're trying to, and we only have an afternoon. So much to see, and it's all very colorful. It apparently is bad luck if you enter through the tiger and leave through the dragon. So you do it in reverse. Enter through the dragon, leave through the tiger. Look at the whiskers on the cat. Well, we are the first to admit that we don't really understand what we just experienced. <laughs> we know that we went in the right direction and out the right direction. And the artwork was something that we could appreciate. The colors are unlike artwork that we're used to. It's really beautiful, except when things turned a little bit scary, a little bit weird. 
Well, that was really cool. I can't believe that I finally am in this spot and seeing the pagodas in person. You know, it's so funny how you expect things to look after you've been seeing them on television and then you see them in person and they're so much bigger. That was amazing. Look at all the turtles. They're all over. Never seen so many turtles in one place at one time. Never. We are moving around the lake in a clockwise direction. So just to the north, I guess it is, of the Tiger and the Dragon Pagodas are the Spring and Autumn Pagodas. And they're also very brightly colored and you can walk through the Dragon. It's a little bit longer than the other one we went to and a little bit less ornate, but far fewer people. So if you go to one, don't miss the one right next to it for a completely different experience. Still fun. This lake is a hub of activity today. There are so many people here, which makes it a lot of fun to visit. It's a holiday weekend, so we think there might be more people than usual, but it's a lot of fun. I don't think we allocated enough time for this. We are definitely running out of light and things are gonna start closing soon, but we're enjoying all of our stops and especially the lotus flowers, which just like are calling us, video me, video me. So we really hope that you enjoy all the videos of our flowers. <laughs> <laughs> you mean to tell us we did not need to go to Alisan to see the cherry blossoms? This tree is blooming. Bill says it might not be a cherry tree. That's because it isn't. Cherry tree? Way too tropical. Well, we are running a little bit more behind than we were <laughs> because we came across an accident and um, looked like they need a little bit of help and I had a lot of tissues with me. So I handed them off so they could stop a little bit of bleeding and waited with them until uh, some medics came. Obviously we didn't film any of that. We're gonna have to skip this temple because we are headed to the next one at the very top of the lake and that is where we're headed to. Now they shut like in 50 minutes and we really wanna see it. final temple of the day. At least we think so. This is the largest Confucius temple in all of Taiwan. So we knew we wanted to visit it while we were in Kaohsiung. And it's beautiful. The colors are so amazing. And I love the gold dragons that you can see. 
it really is beautiful. Most of these are instruments used in ceremonies. And there's more instruments on the other side. If you come here, there's a really good museum about the history of Confucianism with lots of signs in English that talk about history of Confucius, Confucianism, the rise of it, the fall of it during the Japan era, and then the rise of it again uh, in the 1900s. So don't miss that, it's right behind me. As you can probably tell from the light, it's getting pretty late in the day. <laughs> but we have finally made it to the east side of the lake. It took us like all afternoon, literally all afternoon, to walk the west side. Not because of the distance, but because there are so many cool things to see. We found one more temple we might be able to go in. This one is looking like it's still open. I am really working on my walking backwards skills today. <laughs> You can see all across the lake from here, everywhere that we walked. This is the best view on Lotus Pond. This is not what I expected it to be. delighted that this temple is still open. The view from up here is absolutely amazing and the inside of this temple might be one of the most ornate woodwork temples I've ever seen anywhere. It's stunning and going around the outside are all these, I think they're marble engravings that again are stunning. The most beautiful temple on Lotus Pond is this one. It's fighting words, I think, because I didn't even know we should come to this one. It's just that we happened by it and saw it was still open. Do not miss this if you come to Lotus Lake. It is beautiful. Cheeks. Oh, they're so cute! 
we are at our next destination for the day, Refung Night Market. This is about a 25 minute walk from Lotus Pond where we just were. And already some things are smelling amazing and kind of questionable. I'm super excited to see what we might find here and I'm pretty hungry. Let's go. So for our first dish, we're trying, we're not really sure what it's called. It's a kind of, I don't know, pork bun in a phyllo dough-like bun instead of a pork bun bun, if that makes any sense. It looks super good. It's, it's flaky on the outside and kind of pork bun filling in the center with some green onions and probably onions too. It looks like it's going to be a little bit spicy, which is why Heather's not trying it. I'm trying it first. <laughs> so she asked me if I wanted some oil on it, and I said, yeah, sure, thinking that was just the way everything's made here. It was the chili oil. But it's really good, it's really flavorful. The center is just a nice pork bun-like consistency. The outside's very flaky and warm and hot. It's a good sandwich. I cannot handle the heat. If I had been ordering, I would have said no to the oil. We did not have to go far for the second item that we're trying tonight. It's just across from where our first place was. We've been wanting to try sweet potato balls since we arrived here. We haven't yet, so tonight's the first night. And they smell just like fresh sweet potatoes. I'm so curious about these. They're deep fried. It's got to be good, right? Mmm. Ah, oh, I totally smushed it. <laughs> What? That is not just sweet potatoes. Is that sweet potato and mochi? We had something sort of similar to this when we were up in the mountains, but it didn't taste like sweet potato. This is delicious. I, I don't even know what I'm eating. Is this like a dessert, an appetizer? Somebody needs to fill this in below because I'm just confused. But what I do know for sure is that it's delicious. Just for the camera, I bit into another one. Sometimes these sacrifices have to be made, you see. We seem to have walked out of all of the food and into some kind of game area. I think we're kind of lost. <laughs> this place is huge. This is the best version of a ring toss I've ever seen. This place is really sensory overload. What are those? Something else we've been excited to try are these green onion pancakes that we've seen everywhere. It looks amazing and there's egg involved in it somehow and we got one with basil in the middle. It looks pretty amazing. I don't think I've ever had soy sauce and egg together, but it really works. This is delicious and maybe my new favorite street food. <laughs> I absolutely love this. It is so, so very good. And the basil is really fresh in this one. I absolutely love it. For our final dish, we are going back to something we saw earlier, which is a tart of some kind, which I don't think is very Taiwanese, but it looked delicious. So that's what we're headed back to. And you are seeing what I see as I walk through this narrow aisle.
distinctly not Taiwanese. Next up, we've got a honey and walnut tart. There's nothing French. <laughs> there is something French. <laughs> what I meant to say was there's nothing Taiwanese about this. There was a, a great looking French pastry and dessert place that we just wanted to try it. It looks really good. The variety of food you're able to get at these night markets is really amazing. It's really dense. It's delicious. It's basically honey glazed walnuts on top of a shortbread base crust. It's fantastic. It's not overly sweet, even though it looks like it should be, because it's just shiny and glazed all over the top. But it's just right. The shortbread's got a slight bit of salty flavor to it, and that goes really well with the glazed nuts. Well, I think that about does it for our first day in Kaohsiung. We got a wrap, otherwise I'm not gonna get any of this delicious looking dessert. If you liked this video, you might be interested in a video we filmed in Singapore at Hao Par Villa. We're gonna link to it right down here so that it covers up the dessert that I am currently not able to have any of because he's eating it all. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.